Hi everybody, it's Marcy from wavesofcommunication.com and today I am producing a video to give you seven tips to help you create your home language facilitation plan. If this is the first time you're watching me, welcome to my platform. My Waves of Communication platform is designed to equip and empower parents to teach your children how to shift from nonverbal communication into unprompted spoken language during the everyday activities you do at home. Today, I'm going to give you seven tips with a bonus eighth tip at the end to help you facilitate, generate, and create your own language facilitation plan to use at home during these unprecedented times that you have extended, unlimited, 24-7 time to spend home with your late talking child. And so I'm considering this an unprecedented opportunity for parents because I know that you need the support and I also know that you have the power to see improvement during this period of time while you have your kids home. You don't have to worry because speech therapy is canceled. You can do it yourself when you become your child's language facilitator. And just so you know, right now I have on sale on my Waves of Communication platform my Language Facilitation Basics Independent Study Online Course. It's typically sells every day for $500 and to respond to parents needs that course is available right now for only $99 and you can find it on my website wavesofcommunication.com all right let's get into these tips tip number one is to relax and embrace this time as what it is an unprecedented opportunity to work with your child you're the new principal, you're the new teacher, you're the new CEO of your family's home school right now. And you are the therapist too. So this is your chance to create your plan to move forward. So the first step is to own the responsibility of being the plan creator and use these follow-up steps to help you Set your plan to move forward so that you don't run into any stagnancy, that you find yourself getting things done, and you are actually making progress. So the first step is to own the responsibility and become the principal. Step number two is about the feelings surrounding this new change. Just like you are having to adapt everything in your household by having children home, maybe you're having to adapt your work so that you're working from home or telecommuting or having to go in and leave your kids with other people periodically. All of these things are your new reality and all the feelings that you're feeling as part of those changes are part of that reality. What you also need to consider is that your child is also experiencing these feelings of change. Remember their favorite teachers, their friends, um, even their favorite activities, the things that they like to do every day that they feel good about, they're not going to have those experiences anymore. And in a lot of cases, it was a real sudden change where school was canceled at a last minute notice when you didn't even realize you were just told, don't bring your kids tomorrow. And with that kind of shock, you need to help your child ride through those feelings as well. And 
together the way the best way to do that is when you all look at this instead of problems to solve as ways to move forward establishing new patterns and new ways to do things because honestly this change is going to be going on for the foreseeable future we don't even know how long i'm telling the clients in my program and those following my platform to plan on at least six months of time and if it happens earlier that you get to go back great but there are many many families who are going to find themselves without a public school situation or even a private school situation um, until fall, until August. So now is your chance to set your mindset as moving forward to be the CEO and principal of your new home school and establishing for your kids the understanding that you are going to, as their principal, just like the principal would of a school, meet everyone's needs. You're going to provide the circumstances for the kids to learn. You're going to provide the way for the staff to be happy during the process because the whole staff of your house, you and your partner, all the parents, all the other kids and siblings, the principal is in charge of making everybody happy in the home school, and that's your job as a parent as well. So you'll be embracing all of these things and understanding how is everybody feeling about this process. And that will help you move forward in your plan to make sure that you're meeting all those needs for everybody in the process. Tip number three is to decide with the adults in your family as the principal of your no, new school, what are the things, the curriculum is what you're really developing here, what are the most important things that you want your child to learn? Not thinking about school, not thinking about what does school expect them to know. Right now, you are the principal, you are making the curriculum. So you need to decide, and this is going to be different for every family, and you need to do it for every child if you have more than one child, where you will be identifying what is it that you need to teach your child that you want to teach your child make a list of those things with some specific goals like I want to see my child move up to be able to reading chapter books or I want my child to be able to start talking I want my child to be shifting from tantrums into words using needs based language you need in your own head to decide what level you want to see your child progressing towards and which of those goals are the most important for you to focus your curriculum around. This is really important, so you need to make a few lists here. The first list is the things you want to teach your child, right? And number two is the things that you are remembering from therapy or from teachers that they are going to want, skills that they'll need to maintain to be able to go back to school eventually, sitting and listening to a story, waiting, taking turns, you know, things like that. You'll want to make sure that you include some of those kinds of skills because these are skills that you're maintaining and continuing to teach your child those kinds of things make a list of those and then the most important list because this is your chance to spend time with your child things that you have always wanted to teach your child things like sports or cooking or cleaning up or you know even if you're very interested in technology and so is your child this is the time that you could teach them how to use PowerPoint um, how to make their own presentations how to make their own videos you could teach them how to you know produce their own videos and make their own YouTube YouTube channel. You can teach your child all these things if they're things that you are interested in, that you know skills about, or that you're willing to learn to teach your child. So making a list of the things that you want to teach your child, that's what's going to be really important. Making a list of things that you want to teach your child. 
Okay, then once you have your goals and the things you want to teach, the next step, step number four, is to create some environments in your home that are going to help you with being the principal of your home school. So different environments have different kinds of activities sort of assigned to them. For example, beds should be the place for quiet time to happen. That is the place for quiet time. If your child is getting too rambunctious and they need a break, if you establish beds are for quiet, then you don't have jumping on beds and running around and dancing in those areas. Designate a different area in your house for the high activity area. Your living room area, a playroom, or even if you need to send it outside. But I highly recommend you have a place indoors that your kids are allowed to be rambunctious and do whatever they need to do in that area. They may be jumping on couches and climbing on things. If you don't have those um, gross motor kinds of activities available in your home now, this is a great time to order from Amazon a trampoline or a tunnel. Or if you don't have funds to buy those kinds of things, you can create forts and, and make tunnels yourself with chairs and blankets and crawl under them, uh, crawl on top of the chairs and go under the tunnel. You can make your own little circuit if you take chairs and put blankets and the tunnel goes under and the climbing on top. Different things like that. You put in areas where there are high activity allowing uh, the biggest spaces in your home, right? Um, also the bathroom, the bathtub could be the area for playing, but sink and toilet areas are not for playing because when you have free play time later in your in these tips with your kids you don't want them coming up with their own ideas to go create messes in the bathroom while you're trying to work in the other room you want to create areas that are off limits for free play time just like you will have places that are for free play time. So if you see your kids getting rambunctious in the bathroom, you've already established your big gross motor play area is the living room. This isn't where we do it. You can go do it over here. The, and if one child is in the middle of the living room and wanting to cuddle up with their book or iPhone and the other kids are playing around, send the child who wants to be quiet to their bed so they can have their own quiet time there and not disturb the other kids, still get their needs met. And this is how you will f avoid a lot of conflict even between your kids and you and your kids and each other by creating spaces in your house. As the principal of your home school, this is where things happen and this is where things don't happen. The kitchen is for eating, by the way. I highly recommend you don't allow food all over your house, that you have only eating in your kitchen area. Even if kids are sitting on the floor eating in your kitchen area, it will help you a lot in the future. There are many schools that don't allow kids to have food and snacks wherever. If you need a place outside of your kitchen to feed your kids, set up a little table. Get your dining room table. Make sure it's clear of clutter so that you your family knows this is where we eat. If you have a little table for little kids like a play table, set it up with your little diner area so that your child always knows their snack time is there to sit at the table. Even if they're playing in their playroom and you want to give them a snack in there, make sure it is at a table so that you don't have food all over your house in little bowls and bags and packages and handfuls and shirts and things like that. Because it's you're always going to be cleaning up those messes all the time. And remember, as the principal, you want to set these standards up from the beginning. So that's tip number four is about setting up your homeschool environment. Okay, tip number five is to create a daily 
flow. This is different than a daily schedule, but it's similar. So just like the days that you used to have to get up and go to school or take your child to school, you had a flow of how things had to happen because you had deadlines. Times to get out the door, we have to be there by a certain time. Now you don't have those deadlines and you don't need to have these rigid hurry, hurry, hurry mornings to get out the door or or um, worry in the evening, did we get our assignments done before we go back to school? You don't have any of that anymore. Now you're you're the principal, you're the homeschool teacher. So you create the flow of the homeschool day. And you do that by creating a loose schedule. And certain things are non-negotiable. We have to get up and change our clothes so that people aren't wearing PJs all day unless you pick one day of the week to be pajama day. I highly recommend you get up and get dressed and do something to prepare yourselves for for a day of learning, even though it's not going to be structured at a school, get up and get ready to embrace the day. Every single day, start your day with intention so that your kids will understand that we've got things to do. Even though we're not at school, there's things going to be happening in the house. So get up, get dressed, Eat a breakfast in the morning. Eat some food in the morning. And then as far as future food, establish general snack times. It doesn't have to be at exactly 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and noon and 9 a.m. You know, your meal times don't have to be exactly at the same time, but the flow of the day should be the same day after day. So your kids will know what to expect. So if they know that there will be a snack midday before lunch and there will be a snack mid-afternoon before their evening meal and there will be a snack before bed they're not going to be asking you for snacks all day long you structure it into your flow of the day. So at the beginning of the day, you as the teacher and principal will outline, all right, we're going to get up. Today we're wearing X. And I recommend that you, one of the th fun things that you can do about getting ready is establish certain days to wear certain things. So maybe you have one day where you all wear your school uniforms, if that's what you wear. Um, and then you choose things to do that day that are going to be not as messy, where you could, you know, damage those clothes because you're going to be in the house. And other days where you're going to be doing things like painting or, you know, construction or getting dirty outside, then you wear different play clothes. So depending on what your day is going to be like, let them choose their clothing now. They, they have a chance to choose it when they didn't before. All of these, by the way, are language facilitation opportunities as you move in your through your plan. And then you're going to make your flow of your day same with your activities general flow again it doesn't hold to a rigid schedule it goes based on that list of things that you wanted to teach every single day you're going to offer the chance to keep working towards one of those goals that are going to be activities that you know your child will love and then that's how you're going to match your curriculum what you're going to be teaching during your day and i use that word teaching very loosely Loosely because teaching doesn't mean you have to setting up a table with pens where your child has to sit for certain hours of day to do certain things. Unless your child really loves those activities, don't set up your dining room table as education time. Set, leave it open and flexible so that you can teach whatever with that dining room table. Um, you know, your, your kiddo doesn't have to have a school at home. You can do schoolwork anywhere, everywhere, laying on the floor, wherever you want, as long as your child is motivated to do that work. So throughout your day, you put in 
these education opportunities to teach the things you want to teach your child. So some of them are going to be sitting at the table reading and writing if you're working on academics. But if you're working on language, it should be play. It should be chores. It should be fun things that you want to do with your child every day and things that you want to teach them. So if you want your child to learn to ride a bike, put in your bike riding time. Okay, so tip number six, make sure, of course, in your daily flow that you allow for lots, I mean lots, like six hours a day of free play time. Six hours of free play time. That means letting your kids do whatever they want in the environments that you have set up and you have to provide them with opportunities to do things. If you don't want them to be watching tablets or playing iPad games, then you need to be providing them with opportunities to find things on their own, offer things for them to engage in that are not structured. Outside playtime with a playground or balls in the backyard or running around with your dog or taking a walk outside. These are wonderful ways to teach things without any kind of structure. And you can follow videos on my channel to learn how to do all of those things. So the, that's one of the joys of homeschooling is flexibility. You can teach whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, as your child's teacher. And there's no rules that you, you know, have to go against because you're the principal. You make the rules. That's what's really important about this whole homeschool plan creation, the luxury, the opportunity to teach your child your way. And now we're moving into tip number seven, which is to introduce something new every day, as many days as you can. So even if it is not something new in your life, like laundry. It could be new in your child's life. So if you've never taught your child to do laundry before, now is your chance. If you've never taught your child how to empty the dishwasher, now is your chance. If you've never washed the car with your child, now is your chance. In fact, it's a wonderful opportunity to even get a little fresh air, spend some time outside in the driveway. If you've never done sidewalk chalk, if you've never made your own bubbles, if you've never, you know, all of those things that you've never done before, now is your opportunity to give it a try. Film it, put it on YouTube, YouTube or TikTok, it might not work. It might fail completely, but you will enjoy the process if you have a good time with it. If it's something that you want to try and you think is interesting, give it a shot. Now is your opportunity. So tip number seven, try something new every day. Okay, and then now I have the bonus tip. Tip number eight is for families who are living in bilingual households. This is your chance to be able to teach your kids how to be bilingual, more bilingual than they already are. Because if your household is bilingual, your child is probably listening to, to more than one language and they might be using one language a lot more than another, or maybe even you have decided because your child is a late talker that you are only using one language at home. You can use this time to teach your kids how to speak both languages. And my tip for you is tell stories about your day at nighttime right before you go to bed using the new language that you want to teach your child. This time right before you're going to bed, you can talk about things that you have actually done together and experienced together. Even just hearing you have this nice little story time in your home language right before bed, your kiddos will love to listen to that and they will listen and hear you using the language structures naturally in your home language and 
later they'll use those during the day because you've not told stories about fantasy things. You've told stories about them and your family and the things that you did. So if you baked a cake or washed the car or drew with sidewalk chalk, that is what you tell. That's the story you tell in your home language right before your kiddo goes to bed. So they lay their head on the pillow and they start to think and dream in that language. And it's very interesting that a lot of parents are really enjoying this strategy and it really enjoying the connection time with their kids. This is a wonderful time for grandmas and grandpas who live with you to also enhance your child by telling them stories about the things that they are doing, the everyday life in their home language. All right, everybody, those were my eight tips for your home language facilitation plan. Remember, now that you are the homeschool teacher and principal and therapist and CEO and all of that, you get to make the rules, you get to make the plan, and I promise you, if you follow these tips, you will actually see improvement in your child, teaching them whatever you want them to learn during these unprecedented times. And if you wanna know more about how to use language facilitation follow all the resources on my platform it's wavesofcommunication.com and you can find me on youtube facebook instagram and i have a podcast as well called language facilitation helpline so i hope that you use this time to help your child develop more speech and language i'll see you all then on my next video best of luck with your language facilitation plan and bye for now